So I've spent the last couple of weeks studying how gradients are made on the web because I think they look amazing. And I also have a ton of freelance clients who keep asking for them. So after some research, I found five different ways of making gradients on the web. And in this video, I'll go over the methods from the easiest one to the hardest one. So the first method is definitely the easiest and it's the one that would cover most use cases and that is to use the CSS gradients. With that method, you can create and animate a basic gradient using either a linear or a radial gradient. You can use both. And in terms of animation, you basically declare a background with a gradient and then you animate the background position and that way you have this nice CSS gradient animation. It's quite simple. And the great thing about this method is there's also a bunch of tools online that you can use to help you make this kind of gradients. But personally, I found this method to be a bit basic and quite obvious. So I wanna move on to the next method. So this technique is also quite popular inside of the community, similar to the last one. It's basically an add-on or something that you would do on top of the basic CSS gradients. And it is to add uh, HTML or SVG or pseudo elements and make them move around in a random fashion. When you have them moving around in combination with the main gradient, you can have this really nice pattern that a lot of people are documenting online. So I've linked two videos that are taking a look specifically at this pattern, but I wanna move on to next techniques that in my opinion are much more interesting. And the reason is because we are jumping into 3D and inside of that territory, I personally believe that it's there that we can truly create amazing gradients that are truly unique. Of course, the two other patterns are still good and will cover like maybe 80% 80, 80 or 90% of the cases out there, but I still think it's interesting to take a look at the methods that are less known to truly create great art. So this first method that is using 3D is definitely the most intuitive and easy one to learn. However, it might not be the most performance or the most logical scenario to do because the technique essentially is to create a bunch of 3D elements and make them move in a random fashion. Similar to the second method that we've seen, you wanna find a way to make the shapes move around and then you wanna add a filter, like a CSS filter on top of your canvas and make everything blurry. And that way you can create a nice gradient. But this method, as I said, can be like not as performant as the other one, but still I tried it and I didn't see any lags. I think it works quite well. One way you could do this is to create a scene inside any 3D tool, for example, Blender, and then you can export it as a GLB file and extract all the meshes and put them inside 3GS. And then, like I said, you simply need to find a way to move all the meshes around randomly. Uh, you can, for example, use the float component by React 3J, and that's gonna do it automatically for you. And also one thing I forgot to mention that's really nice about making gradients with 3D shapes is that the 3D shapes in the scene, um, if you make them move around, they will mesh one into another. And when you add a blur on top of it, it's really gonna create this unique pattern. And this merging of shapes and the pattern that it creates is quite hard to replicate inside HTML and CSS. And now it's time to cook because we're moving on to the fourth method. And this method is what really interests me personally because it's really that method that drew me into researching everything about gradients on the web. I saw some people use that method online and I saw the results and I was like, I wanna know how to do this. I wanna create unique gradients. And it's with this exact method that you can learn how to do it as well. So the nice thing or the not so nice thing about this method is you have to use a shader, precisely a fragment shader. And the great thing about it is with it, you can create some really unique look, but the bad thing is it can be quite complicated. So here are the basic principles. So the first thing you wanna have is a 2D plane that you've made full screen. And once you have that, we can go inside of the fragment shader and start cooking. So the first thing that you want to master inside of a fragment shader, in my opinion, is to be able to create a bunch of different shapes or a bunch of different patterns with code. To do that, a lot of times you're gonna use noise functions. So for example, sine function, cosine functions, uh, noise, simplex noise, Perlin noise, functions like this that you don't have to create yourself, you can just take some that are already made online and then you can leverage them. And personally, it kind of hurt my eyes at first when I was looking at this code because it's a bunch of numbers. You just have to remember that those numbers are used to create a random pattern. And so the goal here is to stack a bunch of sine or cosines function or any pattern generating function that you'd like in order to create a random and hopefully a nice pattern. And so once you have the pattern, then you can add colors on top of it 
And here I have a loop that's a way of stacking multiple colors on top of each other's and to create like an offset between all the colors. And that's why I have an index here inside of the loop. And now there are many concepts mixed together here. So I don't wanna go too deep and explain everything, but if you're really interested in this, I highly suggest checking Yuri's video if you want a full breakdown on how we can make something like this. And really soon in the future, I'm gonna release my full course where I'm gonna explain to you guys everything step-by-step step what's happening here. But for the sake of this video, I wanna go fast and not spend too much time on the details. And now the next technique is very similar to the last one. In fact, it's built on top of it and it just adds a little extra, little spice on top of it in case you need to create like this very specific pattern inside of your shader. And so that layer that I'm talking about is basically a vertex deformation. And by using that, we can actually have a sharp edge and a clear distinction between the colors. So it's very subtle. If you have a good eye, you're gonna see that by using this technique, we can create sharp edges between our gradients and that creates an extra pattern that would be very hard to do with the fourth method and basically impossible to do with like basic CSS. So for the fragment shader, it's going to be the same as the previous method, but now we're gonna add a vertex deformation on top of it. And for that, we'll use like a simplex noise function. And it's a generic function that you can find online. And we'll increment the Z position of the plane with that noise to create the deformation. It's quite a basic uh, vertex deformation that we're doing here. And now that way, if we zoom in, you're gonna see that we have the same gradient, but with a little extra touch that I find really nice. So yeah, that's all I got. That's it for the video. I hope you found something interesting. I hope you learned something. If you did, leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.